So we're at the Mott's family. Uh, this is their old farm and packing house. The Mott's is a big uh, fruit, canned food producer here in Southern California. This used to be where they canned all their food. They've turned it into an auto museum. They have a whole bunch of uh, antique cars and farm implements. Really neat stuff. History of the local area out here in the California desert. I've been here once before. Coming back specifically because they had a car very similar to the one I just picked up and I would like to see how they set up the suspension on that thing because mine seems to be missing some parts. They got their old windmill. All right so we're gonna walk into the Mott's family automotive museum. This is our entrance have a lot little patio right here <sighs> for they have a little restaurant inside it's just a snack bar really so upon entering we get the 1910 Ford T Speedster it was a mass produced look at this guy this was a vintage race car back in the day we get to walk all the way around it. Look at all the brass work. Look at the windshield. guys think Tesla invented the electric car look at this right here 1924 electric Model T the electric motor was a uh, $75 option look at this no radiator just a Model T it's all electric you just plug this thing in little wood box in the back A little charger. A little, little charger. This thing still works. Okay. It runs. Alright. Oh, this one has the wire wheels. I keep having a backflow problems at home. It has to be repaired again. Twenty four Model T school bus. <laughs> the old brass fire station. I love this place. This is so vintage. Everything is vintage. The driver's seat right there. Got your steering wheel. There's your gauge cluster. And then look, it's just a little wooden bench. A little back door exit. That's all it is. Bare necessities. That's all they needed. So here's the 25 Model T, what they're calling a runabout. Has a truck bed. That's too close for me to scoot behind there. They just have it parked in tight. Here we go. 26 Chevrolet touring car. A little vinyl top. You pull back. The front and the back seat. Twenty-eight Model A pickup truck. This was their actual 
work truck here in the, the farm. Actual work truck, farm truck. So it's got the wire wheels. Don't have the engine displayed. So now we're getting into the more vintage car. This is the 1928 Packard 4-43. 28 Packards. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Straight eight on this Packard. I think this was the lap of luxury back in the day. This is just how. Look at those seats. That folded over seating. Look at that. All that wood grain on the steering. The gauge cluster. I mean, this is a car you could be driven in. These back doors, the suicide doors, they open up and you just slide right in. And the size of those rims and those white walls. Oh my gosh. This was a elegant, elegant car. Especially for its time. Look at the headlights on that thing. Just in comparison, look at that, that's my hand. That's the size of those headlights, they're giant. So we have a 31 Ford Victoria. Look at this guy. The Victoria is a very, very popular model for Ford. It had a lot of the, uh, it was kind of a luxury. It was their top of the line. Look at that vinyl roof on that guy. Vinyl roof on the hard top. So they didn't have a trunk, they used to put the luggage rack on the back and you would just keep your luggage rack. It has the dual tail lights on this one. There's wire wheels. Let's look at the interior. So compare this to the Packard. This is, I think this is a 30, 31. Yeah, it's a 31 Victoria. And you compare this to the Packard. This is like three years newer and it's nowhere near as elegant or luxurious. Now we're going to compare this 31 Victoria, which is basically top of the line for Ford. If you want anything nicer, you'd have to get a Lincoln. And go to this 31 Cadillac. Cadillac V8. So this would be the Cadillac Flathead V8. I'm pretty sure. It's a hot riding legend. The Cadillac Flathead. I saw this one. Ooh wee, look at that. All that emblems. All those luxurious curves. Some windshield wipers. So they turned the back seat into a rumble seat. Now, I've been told that rumble seats are very uncomfortable. But this one seems to have a lot of leg room. I like the look of it. It's just the style. Look at all that chrome on the top. It's just chrome now. So there's your gauge cluster. Let's 
got a spare tire on each side. Look at that engraving. Oh wow, that's so pretty. So, so pretty. So now we're going to go to the 1934 Ford pickup. This says Moss Brothers Garage on it. Uh, so this was another farm truck that they kept. I think they souped it up quite a bit because it wasn't bought brand new. This was bought in the 50s. Here we go. Look at that flathead. I do not believe that to be the original flathead. I think that is. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, 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 ten. Oh, that is the 21 stud. That is the original flathead. Oh, man. So the exhaust design, in order to get around that steering box, they rerouted it to the front was one of the reasons why they had combined that with the two cylinders coming out that center port and like these flatheads would overheat like crazy. It wasn't a matter of if it was going to overheat, it was a matter of when it was going to overheat. All kinds of cracks and blocks on that style. Very bare bones, very essential. This was just a work truck. It's very nice compared to how it would probably look back in the day. Oh, wait, we're gonna go around this big pole. This was just a barn, right? This isn't intended to be a show place. This was just a packing house. Thirty-five Auburn Boat Tail Speedster. I spoke with the gentleman about this car when I was here before. He said it took thirty years to restore this car. Thirty years. This has got the original engine in it. It's supercharged. This is just a gorgeous car. Look at all these. Just the way the light shines off of it. It like glistens. It's it's like the car has glitter on it. We usually just, you know, regular old light bulbs. These aren't like show lights. This is, oh, I love this car. Little wing windows on the side here. Here's our. on there. Auburn Crosley. Oh. And Crosleys were one of the American car manufacturers that didn't make it. Auburn. Thirty-six Plymouth. Look at the way the cars evolved. Look at all these lines, these fenders, the hoods. You got those big old headlights. It's very popular. The wheels, the, the artillery style wheels. So that's what we would call that in wheels. I don't know if that's actual artillery style, but... Love the proportions on this thing. Let's see if we can see through the glass. I think the driver's side is rolled down. Let's see if we can walk over there.
The rear view mirror is mounted on the door up top. Oh, there we go. There's, we can't really see anything. Step backwards in time. 26 Franklin. This is a giant car. This car is giant. This car is big for its modern day. It's like like a lazy boy in there. They added a trunk. It's just backed up. Studebaker Commander. So the Studebakers, oftentimes jokingly referred to as a stupid baker. This is the V8, this is 51. These are very popular for, uh, for what they got little excursion for that big old chrome grill. This is getting into the 50s now. This is the chrome is really turning into. This is a status symbol. Got their hood emblem. Look at the interior design. This is very functional. The gauge clusters are looking a little bit more modern. The window trim is chromed out. This is like a basic sedan. This is what somebody would drive to work. Cars are getting bigger and heavier. All right, so this is a 43 Jeep. They call the Burma. It's a military issue. It's just a big truck. Essential, so they got the jump seat right there. Use a gunner. Just a big pickup truck. Jeep style. There's a winch on that guy. Ooh, wee. So this is a 30 Model A Tudor. We're gonna build one of these guys. Ours is going to be more hot rodded than this in the restoration. The swooping lines, that phantom top, go over it with the, the fabric. basic interior 
this has been upgraded. Let's see if we can get a full car view from over here. It's a 32 Roadster. That's a hot rod. We're gonna get a little peek at the interior. Center dash gauge cluster. A little stick shift. Looks like it's automatic actually if they put it in here. Wouldn't be surprised if they have. Let's see what they got. On the inside, I can't really tell. It looks like a Ford. Ford V8 from the 80s. Probably a small block. So these are the rumble seats that we complained about. There's like no leg room in there. I said it's very uncomfortable. So the only person you would put in there is somebody you don't like or a kid and you don't want a kid in your back seat or somebody you don't like in your car. So, so this right here, I remember seeing this one. This is the reason that I showed up here. This is why. This is a vintage Salt Lake racer. So this is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see how, now it's been modernized slightly. Where, where normal shocks would be. They put the coilovers on there. But what I really wanted to see is how they mounted that flat head in there. Oh, they just tucked it up in there. Look at that. engine it doesn't even mount it just kind of like rests on these uh, on these perches kind of rests on these perches right here. I don't see how they get it mounted. Is there like... It just barely fits in there. Look at that. A couple of doors coming out of the top. That's a vintage. Got the generator up there. It's a tiny little generator. It's probably one of those expensive alternators. Seat belt. That was their safety gear back in the day. I love the way it's just shaped, hand formed, all that leather, all that turned metal for the gauge clusters. I don't know why they made the mirror. I don't take that off. Let's go around to the rear end. So these guys just have one track bar, locator bar. This one bolts right to the frame and they run it all the way back. And it just mounts to the axle right there. They come off the axle to a little suspension piece. That's all there is to it. So they got these frame rails going all the way up, all the way back. 
This was the car that I wanted to see, but it's not really giving me the data that I want. Okay, we're going to continue our tour. 1950 Chevy Deluxe four door. So this was an old school air conditioner. It would just sweep air from the outside and flush it into the inside. It's like a giant fan. Four door. It's got the fastback style. It's a nice little spot. Here we go, fifty eight Impala. If you want to, you could pause it and read a little card. This was Chevy's introduction to going to anything nicer than this. He had to get a Cadillac. These are super nice. Let's look at that interior. Oh, wow. It's your gauge cluster. Little fuzzy dice, nice little addition. Oh man, I love this thing. Never really been a Chevy guy, but this is pretty. I know, it's just everybody had one. I've always been more, wouldn't be different, wouldn't be unique. Everybody always had a Chevy, of course, because they ran. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, look at the lines on this bad boy. So pretty. 56 Lincoln. Right here. Get your tag on that guy. Look at that Continental. It's got that root beer brown color that was so popular in the Steve McQueen era. That's my lighting a little glare on that guy. Let's see if we get it better from long sweeping lines. No, it's only got like a little bit of actual cab space. So this is the famous, they called this the Continental Tire. Usually they're on the back of the bumper, but they made the spare right there oh yeah oh there's your dash cluster look at the interior of this bad boy teeny tiny little mirror you're not really worried about who's behind you in this thing People see this coming back in those days, they just got out of the way. 60 Thunderbird. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. <clears throat> yeah, we This footage, actually, we shot about two years ago, 
and uh, had a lot of um, more timely stuff. A lot of the, the um, times we go to an event, um, it's you had a very short shelf life, so we kept putting off the uh, publishing this video because um, uh, everything else seemed uh, to be a little more timely. Well, finally got a um, situation where, you know, excellent time to put this out. So the lovely people in the Mott Museum, um, very helpful, wonderful people, have uh, done a nice job documenting um, the history of the Inland Empire, the agricultural history of um, the inland uh, Southern California. And um, they've done a nice job sharing their passion with cars with other people who are passionate about cars. Anyways, um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And uh, if uh, you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Really appreciate it. And we'll be back to a lot of our normal shenanigans and uh, tomfoolery um, in the shop. Got a lot of updates been working on. I know those are always never popular. And until next time, have a wonderful day.